This is the DP VR E4 Black virtual reality headset. It's a PC VR system aimed to take on kind of the mid-tier VR market uh, with some interesting cable specs and some very impressive features. So let's go ahead and get into my review. All right, so as mentioned, this is my DP VR headset. Uh, this one was said to be for free to review, uh, although no money changed hands. And uh, of course, the words and opinion you'll hear today are my own. So let's go ahead, get this out of the box, and we'll talk about what's included. So as you would expect, a headset. So uh, pretty standard design. It uh, kind of reminds me in some ways of the PlayStation uh, VR. I guess it's the VR2 headset uh, you got this dial in the back here to adjust the tightness the strap goes over the top of your head and helps distribute the weight more evenly uh, also notable this thing flips up so you don't have to actually take it off your head if there's something you quickly need to uh, check out on your computer maybe you're setting up a game you just flip up the headset don't need to take it all the way off uh, it is attached to a cord that is six meters long. Um, it has a headphone jack right here. Don't know if you can see it, but just before we get to uh, the headset on the cord, uh, there is a headphone set. So it does have onboard speakers if you choose to go that route. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, one of the key features is this DisplayPort uh, connection, or the cable rather, uh, with this DisplayPort connection. Uh, it runs on DisplayPort 1.4 on my machine and uh, does allow up to 4K 120 hertz. It also has the USB 3 connection here. Um, and then if we find it at this splitter here, uh, there's an input for power. So you must connect uh, AC power uh, to this unit. So uh, in this market where the things in the VR world seem to be going increasingly wireless, this one is wired you can debate in the comments which one is better, but uh, DPVR has made their E4 black uh, in the wired version. Uh, also includes these two handheld. Uh, the design is nothing <laughs> groundbreaking, uh, but it does have uh, these two, uh, I guess, controllers, guns, whatever you want to call them, uh, for use in the virtual space uh, to control the various functions of your game. Uh, the design, almost all plastic, as you would imagine. Uh, these pads here that uh, keep, the, uh, keep the headset securely on your face. These are nice, soft pleather or leather. Um, down here, the actual uh, display unit. These are soft and fabric, and uh, they feel quite good on the face. So... Uh, again, flip function. It's got uh, vents top and bottom to help keep things cool. Um, it's got, I believe, four cameras or four sensors up front to help track your motion. There's no, of course, uh, external sensors, unlike my CV-1, they, where you had to provide stands uh, to, uh, to detect where you are in the room. This one does it automatically as soon as you sit it on your head and includes um, uh, free software as well to help get you set up. Uh, there is no adjustable IPD. Uh, it's done through, well, sorry, there is, but it's done through software. There's no, um, there's no physical adjustment of IPD. So, uh, that's just an FYI. Uh, the cable, as you can see, if we flip it around here, does have a couple of strain relief points here, uh, just to kind of keep things from, uh, getting too crazy with your cord as you're moving around the room. Um, I think I've pretty much covered the sort of basic physical features. Uh, so before we actually get uh, on my computer, start looking at the software, before we get in-game, uh, here's a look at some of the key specs of the DPVR uh, E4 Black Edition. Right, so just before we get on track, let's take a quick look at the configuration software. This is the DPVR Assistant uh, 4 software. So as you can see, it kind of shows the status of the uh, three pieces of gear we have. If I mouse over, it'll show my serial number, so I'm not going to do that. 
Uh, you can configure two heights, uh, sitting height, pardon me, and the standing height. Yes, I am tall. Um, and then the sort of uh, game area radius, how big is your play area? And then uh, if you want to go through that setup process, you just click initialization. If we go in here, uh, as you can see, the hardware setup, it'll tell you more about what you got going on and a bit more about your room here. If we go into general settings, uh, that's where we can configure some of the more interesting things. Um, display, uh, as you can see right now, I have it to set to 4K 90 hertz. I'm recording, so um, I didn't want to set it to 120. Might be a bit much for my video card, uh, but just the same. Uh, if you have that uh, DisplayPort 1.4, you can run either 4K 120 or 4K 90 resolution. You can set screen brightness here. I could go a lot brighter. I am fine at 75%. It looks gorgeous in my testing. Uh, you can do IPD adjustment. Uh, this is where you adjust the distance between your lens. Interpupillary distance, if I'm not mistaken, is what IPD stands for. So it helps with focus. Uh, that's a whole configuration process with headset on. So I'm not going to click start. Um, and then, yeah, you can adjust the you know color at the front if you wish. And there's a few other uh, sort of uh, configuration options here. So, uh, you know, not an overly powerful software, but uh, certainly very user friendly. Uh, the setup process was really, really good, really smooth. No concerns there. Uh, so that's your DPVR Assistant 4 software. All right. So let's go ahead and start doing some testing in games. All right. So here we are testing in Optimal Ballista 2. And I am basically giddy. This is incredible the image is absolutely stunning i'm not sure how it's going to come through in the recording uh but the sense of immersion this 3d feeling the the mountain in the background uh the reflections off the cars in front of me just stunning just stunning uh you know this 4k display it's only refreshing at 90 hertz right now like i said i had to tone it down a bit for the sake of the recording uh but just the same uh, no issues with like blurriness, no motion sickness feelings or anything like that from having the refresh rate too low. This is just absolutely mind blowing. Looks beautiful. Wow. What a great way. Whoops. I should have turned off the heads up display. Sorry if you can see that. Um, but yeah, this is just <clears throat> next level. <laughs> it's just only pulls you into the game you know i'm not a vr snob i'm not one of these no vr no buy type people never was even when i was big into my oculus rift uh but it's difficult to beat this D difficult nearing on impossible to beat this sense of immersion i mean we're plunked right into the sense of racing a car with a s headset like this uh, I didn't know virtual reality had come this far. I, I, I've waited too long, is, is the long and short of it. This is fantastic. This is absolutely fantastic. Being able to check my mirrors and, uh, you know, get a sense of exactly where the cars are, where the other cars are relative to myself. Um, and again, the, the sense of sort of interaction with the environment and, uh, yeah, I... Hard to beat, hard to beat. I'm just kicking myself that I waited this long to try this. And uh, again, I'm only running 75% brightness here, so this could be potentially even more immersive if I uh, you know, got those sun rays being even more powerful. But as it stands, 75%, uh, more than enough. Absolutely gorgeous image, very, very sharp. Uh, the pads feel comfortable on my face. Um, no issues with feeling sweaty or anything like that. So they've done a nice job designing a headset, uh, whoops, that, uh, fits well on my head overall. I am getting a bit of light from below, uh, um, which is unfortunate. Like I can see just the, just the very edge of my steering wheel, which again, uh, unfortunate, but, uh, yeah, uh, overall, I mean, the image quality, uh, decent field of view here, 116 degrees, I believe it is. Um, yeah, just uh, fantastic. It, it, it's it's hard to really beat this. This is just the way to experience sim racing on so many levels. 
again, not being a snob, I understand VR is not for everyone, but uh, yeah, it's just hard, uh, hard to really convey what I'm getting out of this compared to what I normally get out of a single or triple screen. Uh, it's not the same. <laughs> this is being dumped into a world of motorsport. Uh, wow, like I never have before. Absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. I don't know how many times I've said incredible in this video, but frankly, it's not enough because this is just something like I've, I've never experienced before. It's so, so good. It, what an experience, what an experience. All right, I think I've sufficiently blubbered over the DTVR E4 sufficiently. Let's get it back to the table. Let's have an honest talk about the good, neutral, and bad of this very impressive headset. All right, so time now to talk about the good, neutral, and bad of the DTVR E4 Black. Uh, things I like, things I'm just kind of okay with, and things I don't like about this VR setup. Uh, so we'll start off with the good. Uh, first thing is the picture is gorgeous. It is stunning. Um, especially as somebody who's been out of the VR game for some time, I am extremely impressed. It is like life. It is so good. Uh, they do such an incredible job uh, with, this, uh, with this headset of displaying a great image. Uh, no issues with blurriness, no issues with artifacts, nothing like that. It looks fantastic. So first and foremost, uh, the picture is really great. Secondly is the software. Uh, easy to set up. Uh, the setup process, which I didn't show you, but it was totally painless. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a bit, you know, cartoony, I guess might be the word. Uh, so it's not meant for advanced users, for, but for a basic user like myself, it has everything I need and uh, is really intuitive, super easy to get set up with this headset. And so the software definitely belongs in the good category. Also in the good, uh, the refresh rate, 120 hertz or up to 120 hertz uh, is excellent. There was no issues with motion sickness or anything like that. It was a smooth image. Um, I really, really enjoyed uh, driving. And uh, again, no concerns with uh, the refresh rate, no concerns with making things look smooth. It looked smooth the whole time and uh, was just a great experience. Also worth mentioning in the good, uh, the flip up front, you wouldn't think it would be that great. It is that great, especially for somebody like myself who primarily plays racing sims. Uh, you can get it all set up, assuming your game has a screen uh, that you boot to where you configure all the elements of your game. Rather than kind of doing this and looking around and where is that, where is my mouse, you know, you just flip it up, set it up as if you weren't going to be driving in VR. And then by the time you click race, you just flip it down and you're good to go. So uh, really simple but effective feature. Also, of course, the compatibility, uh, Steam VR, no issues. I tried it on most of my racing sims, no concerns whatsoever. Uh, Steam VR, sorry, it found Steam VR uh, right away, uh, did all the setup for me basically and boots automatically does Steam VR when you go into the game. So no concerns with compatibility, uh, perfect uh, interactions with all my games uh, with this DP VR. Also the uh, comfort um, and adjustability of the headset. Uh, it's really good. It's not outstanding, I wouldn't say, compared to the rest of the market. Uh, but no concerns with soreness, didn't feel heavy. Uh, I was able to get, uh, you know, use this screw knob in the back to get it tightened to where I like. Of course, the Velcro strap across the top is easy enough to work with. And, uh, you know, I was able to get things dialed in and it feel, felt very, very comfortable. Also in the good, uh, we talk about uh, these pads, these either leather or pleather pads up here. Uh, they felt good on my skin as did this uh, microfiber uh, cloth down here. Uh, felt really nice. So the materials they use are good. And again, it kind of ties into the comfort. Uh, just overall felt very good. And lastly, in the good category, uh, it stays cool. Um, there was no concerns with getting hot. Uh, it's, we're in the middle of a heat wave. So if you can see sweat on me, uh, it's because my garage is an absolute boiler room at the moment. Uh, but it's not because of this headset. And I tried this for extended periods and it was not the, uh, the headset that was causing me issues. If I would race first thing in the morning was when it's a bit cooler in my garage, uh, the headset did not cause me any concern. So keeps you nice and cool. Moving on to the neutral now, things I'm just kind of okay with. Uh, the first thing is the audible fan. So there is a fan at the top here, a fan on the bottom here. Uh, by the way, ship 
from the factory with a plastic uh, film, obviously, to prevent scratches. Be sure to take your plastic coating off before you fire this up the first time. You do not want to uh, plug the uh, the air vents. But uh, just the same, I can hear those fans after extended use. Uh, it's, it's not roaring or anything like that. It's just kind of annoying because uh, when you're immersed in the world and you hit a quiet moment, it's, you know, what is that sound? Oh, it's the headset. Again, not loud. It's barely perceptible. I'm sure other people in the room wouldn't notice it, but because you're at such close range, there are those audible fans. So I'm going to put that in the neutral category. Didn't ruin my experience by any means, but uh, surprisingly uh, audible, I would say, is the best way to describe it. I thought they would be able to get away with a quieter fan in the assembly and also in the neutral category. Uh, the corded design, there's multiple schools of thought on this. Should VR's headsets be corded or cordless? Uh, again, a lot of the competitors are moving to a cordless design uh, with adjustable or swappable battery packs, rather. Uh, this one is corded, for better or for worse. Uh, it's fine for me. It's not going to be fine for other people. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, I'm going to put that in the neutral category. All right, moving to the bad now. Um, the first one is definitely the biggest one. Um, I don't see what DPVR has done with this headset that's going to distinguish it in the market. What's going to make people uh, want this over all of the competition? Uh, there's a number of manufacturers that are in the VR game at this point, and you have to stand out. You can stand out at with price. You can stand out with innovation. You can stand out with support, community. There's a number of ways to stand out in a given market. Um, I don't know what DPVR has done here that none of their competitors can match. So usually when I do reviews, I think, okay, who should I recommend this to? Um, even though I really love this headset and had a great time, I don't think there's anything contained within this DPVR headset uh, that would make you say, oh, forget everyone else, this is the only one for me. Not sort of setting itself apart with either price or innovation or support or community or something like that uh, definitely lands in the bad category. And also, uh, we talked about this a lot, but uh, this cord, uh, it's quite heavy. As you can imagine, uh, you know, corded design isn't for everyone. I've talked about that. Uh, but this one is surprisingly kind of heavy and rigid. So um, I think if you were moving around, it's fine for me because I do sim racing, but I think if you were moving around a room, you would kind of feel that cord moving with you. Uh, I, I think the cord would be noticeable uh, given its weight and sort of, it's not stiff, stiff, uh, but it's stiffer than you might imagine a cord to be attached to a headset designed to immerse you in a different world is how I would best phrase it. And also in the bad category, uh, there's no physical IPD. So IPD is inter pupillary distance, basically the lens spacing. Uh, so even my old CB1 had a physical slide, I think it was on the bottom, uh, and it moved the lenses slightly apart or slightly closer together and it could help with focus. Um, this does have it, but it's software based. I would much rather have the physical adjustment uh, than the software version. Uh, good job by DPVR for including it at all. It's glad that I'm glad that the software allows for it, uh, but it should be physical in my opinion rather than soft. And lastly, in the bad category, uh, kind of related to the first in the bad category, uh, the price. So at $599, uh, it's not distinguishing itself. Um, again, I think people are going to shop and I think they're going to look at the Quest 3 um, and sort of everything that's attached to that in terms of the bigger brand. And uh, I don't know that this wins in a value competition. Now, uh, there are certain specs that this wins on. Will those amount to an overall win and justify the price? I don't know. $5.99, which is the list price at the time of recording, uh, just seems high to me. And again, it'll cause people to shop. So um, tying back again to the first in the bad category, I hoped this DPVR headset uh, would sort of distinguish itself in some way and make me think, yes, I'm so glad that this product came to market. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it does a lot of things right, but nothing unique or few things unique. So, uh, it's a tougher value proposition. Is the price outrageous? Absolutely not. But is it good enough to make you think, well, I'm definitely going for that. That's the easy option. No, it's not an easy choice. You're going to want to do some shopping. And just one supplementary note here for the bad category. 
I also forgot to mention that the onboard sounds are not great. DBVR does offer in-ear headphones through their website, and they did ship me a set. Unfortunately, I find the headphones too muddy and the onboard speakers a bit too tinny. Uh, so whereas an over-ear design would have been much better, similar to my outgoing Oculus Rift CV1, uh, this will not have that. So I'm going to put the sounds in the bad category. Okay, uh, that was more time than I usually spend in the bad category, interestingly. But overall, despite the bads, I love this. I get pulled into the world of racing uh, like never before. There is no replacement for VR. Um, it's fantastic. I love my triples. But there's something special about VR. There's something amazing about VR sim racing. And uh, just getting pulled into that world and uh, just immersed is incredible. And this headset does such a great job of that. And it's comfortable. And uh, I really, really enjoyed my time with it. Um, I think it's fantastic. Again, I would recommend you do some shopping. Uh, look at other reviews of the DP VR E4. There's quite a few out there. A lot of people have done really great jobs creating their reviews. Um, look at there's competition obviously for this headset there's competition at this price point do your uh research if you do eventually land on wanting the dp vr e4 black uh check the link in the description i don't do this often but uh i really enjoyed talking to the dp vr people uh in setting up this review and uh i they have nicely offered fifty dollars off uh to uh to my viewers uh, if you order in the first couple of weeks after release, again, not pressuring you, uh, watch other reviews, uh, you know, do some research on the competition, but if you land on this DP VR headset, uh, you can check the link and save yourself 50 bucks. So, um, I'm going to close on that. Uh, I am so excited to be back in the world of VR. It is fantastic. I love it so much. Thank you to DP VR for sending me this headset. Thank you to you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.